I know you're not gonna believe this, but it's gonna be 70 degrees today. Uh, we're officially in Florida, back with Navi. We just met up with the bus. We're at Dale's place. So you guys can say hi to Dale. He's gonna wake up soon. He's not up yet. What we're gonna be doing today is getting out this electrical system. I have no clue what we're gonna be getting into. All I know is that when we start digging into electrical systems, you never know what you're gonna find. So the thumbnail might already tell you if I found something because maybe I'll use that as the thumbnail. If not, then maybe this will be kind of boring. Not too sure. Nah, electrical is never boring. whole closet is gutted. So I took out all the components, just removed the batteries, and this is what's left. Uh, it didn't look this messy, it is all disconnected, so uh, what I gotta do now is find all the AC wires. There's some DC wires, some DC wires. We got some AC wires here. I believe this is our 30 amp shore power. This, I believe, is our generator connection. We got solar wires right here. So now that I got this system kind of completely gutted out, uh, what I'm gonna start doing is just try to organize and figure out what's here, start testing things back and through. So I'm gonna get all the 120 kind of zip tied together, all the 12 volt zip tied together, and then uh, work on the generator set and see what's here. I don't think there's any grounds because I don't see any ground wires. So I'm probably gonna have to add a ground in for the inverter, MPPT, and just the main panel. Uh, we're just gonna take an inventory at this point. All the batteries are in Dale's shed. And you guys know what else is in Dale's shed. That's right, Dale's in Dale's shed. It's my shed, leave me alone. <laughs> Why are you still filming? Oh gosh, we're back at it. Why did I come to Florida to just get yelled at? You didn't. You no. Came to, you come to get away from the cold weather. That's true, I you did. You just got my cold shoulder now, so. Dale! What's up, man? It's good to be back. It is good, it's good to have you back. If anyone's looked at the weather in the last few weeks, uh, here in Florida, it's like 70, 80 degrees. When I left New York, it was negative 30 with a wind chill of negative 50. And that's, what, what do we say, about 100 degrees? Yeah, it's like about 100 degrees different. So if you think that I came for Dale, you're sadly mistaken. It was just for the warm weather. And that's all right with me. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, uh, while I'm doing the solar system, all these batteries were already previously installed. They should have been charged up before they were installed. Uh, but we're not sure about that. So what I'm going to do is rebalance all these batteries individually and then we're going to recombine the battery bank so that when I put this new system in, I'm going to be sure that all these batteries are topped off and in float. Uh, so this might take a bit. It could literally take two days. Who knows? Each battery could take, I mean, they could literally take four, eight hours, multiple cycles. Who knows? Uh, but that's going to be something we're doing in the background and make sure that we get that all done. Uh, Dale's, Dale's just boxing it out over here. What are you Pika doing? Pika supervisor. Oh my gosh, Pika supervisor. Would you Pika supervisor? Pika supervisor. Pika supervisor. Pika supervisor. <laughs> there you go, G. Love you, guy. So, battery number one is currently at 3.4 volts. Battery number two is currently showing one volt. Battery three is 4.63. Battery four is 12.42. On a scale of one to balanced. These batteries are as balanced as Dale and me at 11 o'clock at night on a typical Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys assume on that one. Um, yeah, so we're going to put this charger on and hopefully we can get these batteries kind of restarted. Uh, but we might be a little concerned with all of them but one. Uh, we're going to leave Dale and the batteries in there to charge. Uh, scene 3 volts, 1 volt, and 4 volts. I'm pretty sure those are going to be going through a bit of reconditioning. Uh, hopefully we can bring them back to life. I don't think the batteries are that old and, you know, it's just a, yeah. Lithium batteries are pretty resilient. They usually can drop down and come back, uh, but you really don't want that to be happening. So we're going to balance those and never let that happen again. All right, next task, organization. All right, everyone. I've got the thing completely gutted. I've got most of the wires organized. I did everything. I'm pretty sure about like not even 20 minutes ago or on film maybe 20 seconds ago, I said the comment that there is no grounds and I didn't think there was any grounds that were installed in this original system. Um, I was wrong. And this is where we're gonna have a public service announcement. <laughs> I did find a mistake that I've seen this before and I just, I just gotta point it out. It just, this cannot keep happening. This is why buses burn down. Do you guys see this wire right here? I was kind of wondering why this wire had this connector. Oh. 
Well, I'm gonna show you where it goes. That's the ground wire that they were using. This is not supposed to be like an electrical lesson here, but just a word of warning. That ground wire is 14 gauge, that's Romex. So they just used a Romex black wire, put the ground wire in and you're like good to go. Ground wires and systems need to be the same size or one size lower than pretty much we'll say the largest wire that's in your system. So if you have a 3000 watt inverter and you have 400 amp hours of battery, you should have a four out wire going up to your inverter, which means your ground wire for the system needs to be a minimum of four out or three out. Go look up the codes, but pretty much the word of warning here on grounds is same size or one size lower. So for most of you out there, pretty much literally most of you out there who are using 3000 watt inverters, 400 amp hour systems, that's a very typical system in a lot of vans and buses, four out, three out grounds. Just please, please. All right, I'm done complaining, we're moving on. The electrical system's completely gutted. Uh, I got this piece of cardboard paper right here, which is laid out to the exact sizing of the wall that's in the bus, so that instead of having to hold all these components up on the wall, I can kind of mock it up here, uh, lay them all face down, figure out how I want to actually do this. Then it would just be an easy transfer over into the bus. Uh, so at this point, it's gonna be like design time. I got all of my channels in here, and then the plan is inverter, MPPT, links, bunch of other fuses and breakers, Orion, you know, different parts. But uh, I just cut, I just cut all the face caps for these, so I want to get it all kind of closed in and make sure that it's all measured and squared. And then once I make sure that it's all measured and squared, uh, I'm going to start mounting the components. The goal by the end of my day here is I just want to get everything mounted perfectly so that tomorrow morning I can just wake up and then all day it's just going to be heat shrink, wire, and crimping. And we'll just get that whole thing tied up and uh, moving it along. So yesterday I got all the components mounted. I even started wiring some late last night. I ended up not filming it uh, just cause I mean, it, it would literally be, end up being like a 10 second time lapse of me just running wires. Uh, but the goal of the day is gonna keep going. I'm gonna start working on system by system. Uh, right now I'm gonna start working on the ground wires. So I already have the MPPT whoop, over here, ground wire here going down to our inverter. Then the inverter is gonna go down to our links, links down to the ground chassis. Uh, so we've got all our really big fun wire here that we're gonna be installing. And then it's, you know, just pick the next task. I mean, we're going to be wiring up the servo unit. We're going to be wiring up an Orion down to the alternator or battery. Uh, and then we got to run in all of our leads and batteries uh, that are going to be going in down here. Got the inverter kind of half wired, I'll say, because I didn't get any of the actual 50 amp lines going out, but we did get all the batteries down to the links. Um, next thing that I want to, next thing that I want to finish up is going to be this DC charger. I've got to get a positive wire down underneath the bus and into the actual bus battery system. Uh, put a breaker on it, so I'm going to be underneath the bus for just a little bit, get that wire run up. Then the Orion is done. Uh, then I think I'm going to move on to connecting the links down towards the batteries and then maybe go work on the batteries because I think that those are almost done. So uh, yeah, after the Orion, we'll go check on the batteries. Well, we've got the alternator charger in. Uh, I decided to take a break from over at the bus and come in here and check out the batteries. Uh, these are all of Pat's batteries. These are Dale's batteries. 
Those are Dale's old batteries. And then Casey's got some batteries we have to build uh, outside. So we're just trying to get these all charged up like we were doing before. Uh, unfortunately though, out of all of her batteries, I got three of them to be saved. Uh, they're all back up into float storage mode. Um, completely good to go. Uh, this one, unfortunately, is not waking back up. Um, I'm a little concerned it's dead, so I'm gonna take it apart real quick, see if we can't see anything obvious. Um, if not, um, kind of confident that this one might already be dead, so I'm gonna hope I'm wrong. Uh, if not, she's gonna have to order one more battery real quick, uh, and then we'll get them in, and then I'll float all these batteries together, get the battery bank all balanced, and then we can actually put it inside the bus and get the system starting to run. But for right now, it's, uh, it's battery surgery time. Fingers crossed. So the one battery that was dead, we called SOK and talked to them about how to possibly jumpstart the battery by bypassing the BMS. They told me how to do that on their particular battery and I'm doing that right now. And it looks like we are just about to get the battery back to 10 volts. It was previously at 0.5. So we're literally at, I don't know if you can get that on camera, but we are currently at almost at 10. 9.98, 9.99, 10 volts. Man, nice. So now that we're at 10, now that we're at 10, we should, by the guy at SOK, should be able to unplug these alligator clips, turn on the Victron charger, and it should charge these batteries up to full. And then test number two is gonna to be to discharge the battery and make sure that we can get it to actually charge and discharge. And if that's true, we save this battery. If it's not true, they're gonna warranty and send us a new one. So either way, we're gonna be fine, but it's more fun to fix a battery. This battery should say, sorry, yeah. 10 volts. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Pat? Pat doesn't wanna be on camera, by the way. 10 point, 10.2. 9.71. Uh, All right, gotta put it back on. <laughs> All right, we were close. <laughs> okay, the next thing, next step on these batteries, I'm gonna wire them all together and then get them balanced out in one battery bank. So I'm gonna do it outside the bus because I still have to work on the bus over there a bit more where the batteries are actually gonna end up going. So I'm gonna balance them, do all this out here, and then install them. Uh, so pretty much all I'm gonna be doing is, uh, you know, connecting all these down and then putting the charger on them. Gotta make sure your batteries are balanced before you put them in. Number one mistake that I see is that people don't balance their batteries, their lithium batteries together, and then they end up with an uneven battery bank, and then you take a really awesome warranted battery for a lot of years and deplete those years by quite a few. Uh, I'm gonna be going positive to positive, negative to negatives all the way through. Um, so what I figured out I need is six equal lengths. <clears throat> um, I wanna make sure that this wire is equal lengths between the terminals so that the batteries are gonna be balanced as they're discharging and charging. And then also I need to measure out from the most negative and the most positive terminal up into the Lynx distributor and get that measurement because those we also want to be the exact same length. Um, so right now I'm gonna pretty much make six lengths and then two long ones, put it all together and start balancing. Okay, so the batteries are all balanced out. I'm getting ready to put them back in. Uh, right now, the next big thing is gonna be putting this ATS switch in. I did most of the wiring off camera. It literally is just me heat shrinking and crimping and it's very boring B-roll. So uh, most of this is wired. Uh, right now, she's got a generator, a shore power hookup right here, and then it's gonna be coming out all the way up into her inverter and then out to this panel that I still have to finish. Um, but that's gonna give her the ability to have an automatic transfer switch between her shore power and generator. And then the inverter is gonna do all the other fan smart stuff so that she doesn't have to worry about a thing and just flip a light on or turn the oven on and then things should just work. But uh, I gotta get this 50 amp in and then we'll finish up this panel here, get the batteries back in. And this system's pretty much almost tied up and ready to go.
All right, for the fourth beer change and haircut that I've had in this video, if anyone's noticed, I didn't film an outro, so here's an outro. I'm currently up in Portland, Maine, not, no longer in Florida. Pat's system is done, doing great. She's actually already out in Arizona. You're gonna be seeing a sailboat in like two videos. See you next time.